Let that pumpkin apple soup simmer for a while. Greetings from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry. And it is a beautiful autumn afternoon here in East Tennessee. And we are nearing our treasured holiday here in America of Thanksgiving. And despite the fact that the world seems quite unsettled right now, things are very uncertain and topsy-turvy, Wherever you look, we can still take pleasure and give thanks for the simple things in life. And one of those simple pleasures in life is taking something which would normally be discarded and turning it into something very lovely or fun or pleasant. So today we are going to take these corn husks and we're going to make a corn husk doll. This is an early American heritage craft. It's very simple to do. You can do it with your kids, you can do it with your grandchildren, or you can just do it on your own by yourself because this is kind of fun and you can make these as simple or as ornate as you like. But we're going to start out with a really simple corn husk doll. I'm going to start out by making a very basic and simple little corn husk doll. And the materials that you're going to need are very simple. You're going to need a bowl of warm water. You're going to need some corn husks. Now these you can get either from the grocery store in the Mexican food section. These are the corn husks used for wrapping tamales. Or you can get them right out of your field. Or you can just shuck them off the corn you bought from the grocery store and use them while they're green. But since we're using the dried ones, we're going to have to soak them in the water to make them subtle. S pliable, I should say. And also you're going to need some heavy duty string, thread, twine. You could use embroidery thread. You could use this uh, crochet thread. Or I also like uh, using heavy duty quilting thread. So the first thing we want to do is we want to soak our husks in some warm water so that we'll be able to maneuver them in the position that we want. This doesn't take very long. Now, maize, or corn, originated in America over a thousand years ago. And the first corn husk dolls were likely made by the Indians, the Native Americans, who in turn passed the craft on to the European settlers to the New World. So these were then popular little toys and crafts for hundreds of years here in this country. I always think of uh, Little House on the Prairie when, I'm <laughs> when I've made these in the past. That's just what it makes me think of. 
Laura and Mary sitting out in the field making little corn husk dolls. A whole family full. But this is a wonderful craft. If you're a homeschooler, this is a great project to do with your, your little students. So we'll let these soak for a little while. As you can see, they're already getting pretty supple. Kind of soppy and wet here on your table, so do cover it with a nice heavy towel. Soak up all that extra water. And when your corn husks are nice and soft, pull a couple of them off. Get rid of that water, and we're going to start by making the head of a little corn husk doll. Now, to show you how, sim how simple we're going to start out, we're starting out with something this easy. And this is pretty about uh, maybe three or four steps, just as easy as can be. So this is our first corn husk doll, something very, very easy that any child could make. So have a couple lengths of string or thread before you begin so that you have it at your fingertips. You're only going to need for this tiny doll about four pieces of thread. Now the size of the head is going to determine the size of your doll. So depending on how wide of a husk you grab to start out with, that's going to be the, determina the ter determinating factor on the size of your doll. So we're going to start out with about, uh, the biggest width here is about six inches. And of course then the corn husk gets thinner and thinner. I'm going to grab the corn husk right in the middle and I'm going to give it a twist. I'm just giving it a twist like that. I'm going to fold it under and then I'm going to form a little head right over that corn husk stuffing. take our husk, we're going to gather it in the middle, and we're going to give it a twist. There's our twist. Then we're going to fold it over at the top. Here's our inside. We want to work the front of the face around that. We're just going to form the husk one side over the other. Okay, and now we will give it, give her a neck with that thread. You've got to have really strong thread because you're going to pull it real tight and give it a nice little knot. There we have a very simple corn husk doll head two heads. Now we're going to make the arms. Sometimes Indian doll makers would split a husk in three and then braid it for the arms, but we're just going to do it a really easy way. Now let's see. We'll measure the arms later. We're just going to roll up the husk like so. I think those are pretty wide arms. Let's take a thinner husk. I'm going to take this very skinny husk right here. I'm going to roll it up real tight. Very, very tight. And then starting on one end, we'll wrap it, tie it for the hands. Okay, that's pretty long thread. Guess I didn't need it to be that long. Cut it. And let's see, measure her for her arms, probably right about here. 
give it another tie. There we are. Tie it. Cut it. And give her some nice tidy hands. And there we have the head and the arms of one of our first dolls. String or thread, we're going to tie those arms. Let's make sure they're in the right position. I'm going to tie those arms. Let's see. There we go. So now, does that look right to you? <laughs> okay. We're just going to crisscross them with our thread and give it another tie. And we are actually almost finished. I told you this one was simple. <laughs> this is such a simple little doll. Now, out in the field, if a child was making these out in the field, what would they have used to tie these with? Well, they probably would have taken a long string of the corn husk and simply tied it, like that, and then given it a tie, which would work just as well. But since we have the beauty of thread handy at our fingertips, we'll use that. Now we want to make her a dress, and then she is actually finished, just like that. For her dress, you're going to take another wider corn husk, and you're going to take your fingers, you're going to split it right about down the middle so you have a nice little hole here where you can poke her head right through. Now we're going to gather her dress at the shoulders on each side. Holding it over and pinching it right there at the bodice and holding it. You're going to need a longer piece of thread this time and you're going to wrap that. You know, um, as you're working with these husks, you're going to notice that some of them are really stiff, uh, not stiff, but thicker and firmer than the others with a lot of sort of like ruffles in them and some of them are very delicate and fine. Those delicate ones work great for making sleeves as we get a little more into this and you can see a little more complicated style of corn husk dolls. But there you have a beautiful <laughs> but plain corn husk doll. If you've seen corn husk dolls in the past you may have noticed that Often they have, in fact almost always, they do not have a face. Their faces are blank. And there are many legends as to why this is so. But one of the Native American legends is that a corn husk doll, or a doll, had such beautiful features that she became very vain and selfish, displeasing the Creator, who then took away all her features and the lesson is this, was to teach children not to be vain and selfish. And so I suppose that's a pretty good lesson. But normally, as I say, you will see corn husk dolls without any features, without a face. So here is just the simplest little corn husk doll you can make. It's very sweet. It's very charming. It's very simple. No color in this corn husk doll. But we're going to remedy that in our next lesson here. So this would be wonderful as probably little settings at a Thanksgiving table perhaps, or as little favors, or maybe even on your mantle or on your Christmas tree. So that is lesson one for the very basic and simple corn husk doll. Now we're going to go on to make one that's just a little bit more complicated. I started making corn husk dolls when my kids were little. And then Early American Life magazine asked me to write an article on the dolls and directions on how to make them. So I sketched out some instructions and did some detail writing on the directions 
and they include several photographs of my dolls. And that was back uh, around 1988, so, so quite a long time ago. So I'm going to be for referring to my own instructions because it's been so long since I've made a corn husk doll. I'm going to have to refresh my memory just by looking at my own directions here. I tell you this just to say that although this can be a simple craft, you can also turn in this into an art, an art form. Uh, it, depending on how far you want to go with it, it can be quite a wonderful artistic expression. Now to make a more substantial corn husk doll, we're going to need some 17 gauge wire with wire cutters. We're going to need some pins, straight pins. T-pins are the best, but I just didn't have any. Nice pair of scissors. You're going to need that string again. And a styrofoam ball. It's preferable if you can get one shaped like an egg or a head, but I don't have one. I just have these round ones, so I'm going to have to form this into the shape of a head. Oh, and this time we're going to be using dyed corn husks. For this doll, we're going to be using some dyed husks. And to dye your husk, it's very simple. You can do it on your stove top. Just get some fabric dye. I'll put a couple tablespoons in the water, the boiling water. Put in your corn husks. Take it off the stove. And when they get to the color that you want, just remove them from the stove. And you don't need to rinse them off or anything. And just set them aside. So I had some writ fabric dye. I didn't have very many colors. I just had some teal and some forest green and red. So I'm going to be using these and I'm also going to be using my natural corn husks as well. Start out by cutting a 7 inch piece of wire for the head and a 10 inch piece of wire. This is going to be the arms and the hands. And you want a nice supple and pliable 3 inch piece of corn husk which you're going to gather in the middle and tie tightly. I'm going to use, this time I'm using some really strong upholstery thread because it's pretty sturdy. You can pull it really tight without breaking it and it's not as visible to the eye as that thicker crochet thread. Now I'm going to take my little styrofoam head and place it right in there and I'm going to start gathering the husk around the head. Try to smooth it out as much as you can. And then, with your strong thread, tie it at the neck. Just like we did with the little doll. As you can see, the size of this doll is going to be quite a bit bigger have another little doll head without a face. But after a couple of years of making corn husk dolls back when I was doing it, I got tired of not having a face on my dolls because I like faces. So I started to paint with acrylic paint faces on each of my dolls. And fortunately, I still have some. I found a bag of doll heads that I had painted over 20 years ago and it was like finding a treasure uh, to me. So I didn't make them beautiful faces because I didn't want these dolls to become too vain according to the Native American tales. So uh, let me show you these heads. I think some of them are a lot of fun. Look at all these heads. <laughs> what fun. Let's look at this collection of funny heads and funny faces. These I painted with acrylic paint, and I've even got a cat head here. I've got one already with hair. That was flax hair. I've got a big sunflower face. This is going to be fun. So I'm going to use one of these heads for this doll that I make today instead of a blank face. And I think I'm going to choose... Oh, I just don't know. Oh, who should I choose? kind of like her. 
and I kind of like her. She looks like a colonial lady. Oh, I like her teeth. Hmm, she's rather, she's rather sweet. Okay, I think I'm going to take this one. Now we're going to take our seven inch wire and we're going to poke it right through the neck and up into the head, all the way up to the top without going through the top of the head. There we go. Now isn't that better than a faceless dolly? So to paint faces on these, use an acrylic paint and before you paint the face on, apply a clear coat of a fixative. Let that dry and then paint on your face and then when that's dry, cover it again with a clear fixative. And your doll heads will keep for as long as mine have, which is over 20 years. Okay, I have a confession to make. That 10 inch wire, make that a 12 inch wire. I don't think that that was long enough for her um, arms. You want some pretty long arms because you're going to have to take your, your wire and make a little loop to create a hand. So, if you're going to make a doll with a head this large, cut your arm wire to 12 inches instead of 10 inches. Sometimes we have to make adjustments, you know. You'll get the hang of it if you make a couple of these. Okay, there. Take your little looped wire and take the quarter inch corn husk and wrap it around the wire. And then fold it over and then begin to wrap the arm thus. Until it's nice and tight. This is a lot easier without gloves, but I'm going to be using these dyed husks and I don't want the dye all over my fingers. Now get your pre-cut thread and you're just going to wrap that little arm up like that. Now this part isn't going to show because you're going to put a sleeve and a dress on this doll. And I'm going to take my husk. I'm going to wrap it around a loop looped wire, fold it over, and start wrapping it tightly. See? Our next step is going to be making the bodice. So we're going to take a little ball of cotton or wool or polyester, about a full inch husk. Place the ball of polyester right there halfway up and wrap it. Then we're going to bend it over and we're going to tie it right here on the end. Now we're going to take this nice delicate husk and we're going to make a sleeve by putting the little hand on the wide end of the husk and we're going to gather the husk around the wrist. As nice as it might have been for a child to make these corn husk dolls. If you think back on those days of the pioneers and the Native Americans and the colonists, they didn't let a thing go to waste. So aside from making dolls, these corn husks were used for stuffing mattresses and pillows. They were used as kindling. The corn cobs themselves were not wasted. They could be bottle scrubbers, and they could also be used to smoke meats. 
And also, I actually found when they were great corks in jugs, I actually bought an antique jug once. Uh, it was a whiskey jug, and it had a corn cob used as the cork top. So, and then give it a nice tie. Clip it. This is when you'll be happy that you used a very delicate corn husk because you're going to turn it inside out. And because of the fact that it's so soft and silky, it's going to easily turn without ripping. That's one thing. Be careful with these. They, they, they can be a little bit delicate. If it rips, it's not a major, major problem. But it's a lot better if they don't. So there you have a puffy sleeve. I'm going to tie it here. I'm going to make another sleeve on this side. So here we have the sleeves, the arms, the head and the neck. We're going to take the head, place it right in the center of our arms, and we're going to tie that with our heavier thread by crisscrossing over and under. Now let's take our bodice, place it where it belongs, take our heavy thread, give it a wrap around the waist, And a knot. So we've tied it here in place to the wire. You see? And now make sure that you, you're you using a very long piece of um, thread for this. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to crisscross over the shoulders to secure this. Like so. Can go over it two or three times if you like, just to make sure it's nice and tight. Now to secure that bodice in just a little bit better, we're going to take two thin pieces of husk and just drape them over the shoulders and to the waist on either side. gathered at the waist and tied. Well, you know what? We're nearly done. Now this would be considered her undergarment, in my opinion. So because her dress is teal, we're going to do the same thing using some teal, wrapping it over her shoulders and creating her bodice for her dress. And you can let a little bit of that white show through. So far so good? We're nearly there. Now you're going to want a lot of husks for her skirt and these nice thick husks are really great to use for skirts. So we're going to use as many as we want depending on the fullness that you want the skirt to be. Taking them and we're going to be fastening them around the waist upside down like that probably four to five corn husks is what we'll want to use. But you can start on one side, tie it, and then go to the next. Okay, I've flipped her over and I'm gathering her skirt on the opposite side now. And tying it tightly. You know, these are really pretty sturdy dolls and they can last for decades and decades. In fact, I'm going to show you some of mine that are decades old and they're in really good con condition. All right, flip over the skirt. So from here, you can take this doll to wherever you want to. 
You've got the basic dress on her. She's got wire arms and a wire neck, which means she can be posed in any way you want. Now keep in mind that um, pose her and then let her dry. You'll never be able to move her again. So put her in a pose that you like. So she can bend her arms. She can flip over her hand in any position. She can stand like this, or you can add legs which you would do in the same manner as you made the arms, except they will be longer and the feet will be much bigger than the hands, of course. But right now, we just have the basics of a doll. And according to whatever era you want to dress this doll in, that's your next step. So most of my dolls I used to make in 18th and 19th century style. But for some reason, when I look at her, I think of Elizabethan England. And I wonder what I could do with this doll to put her into that time period. So you want to think about hair. You can use flax, you can use corn silk, you can use sheep's wool, you can use yarn, you can use anything you want to for the hair. And that will require glue, of course. So you'll want some strong white tacky glue to put on the hair. And from here on out, you can make bonnets and aprons and pinafores and bodices and all sorts of things to make your doll more special. Decide what to do with that doll's dress. Let me show you these dolls that are over 24 years old. And uh, that's kind of the beauty of corn husk. You think with something like a corn husk, which seems like such a delicate thing, that it wouldn't last very long. But these really do keep very, very well. Now, the colors have faded, some of them have a little bit of crack in them. Considering the fact that they're nearly 25 years old, I'd say that these corn husk dolls have kept really well. So you can also paint on top of the corn husks. This was acrylic, acrylic paint to make the pattern on the dress. And her hair, this one's hair is corn silk. And look at that, it's still intact. This one's hair was flax. This one's hair is sheep's wool and the quilt was painted right onto the corn husk. The polka dots on her dress were painted with acrylic paint. I always liked her. This one, <laughs> this one's probably the crinkliest, kind of the more the mess, but that's okay because they're flowers in the garden. I call this one potted ladies. And you see, you can just have so much fun making these dolls. You don't have to stick with a simple doll. You can really get artistic and have some fun. And I had a great time making Mother Nature here. So here we have Mother Nature in all her glory. Now I'm going to go work on that other doll. So here once again we have the simple little pioneer Native American corn husk doll. And this is what I ended up doing with the other doll. Now if you see strings and pins on her, that's because of that is what holds her in place while she dries and those will be removed later. Anyway, she kind of reminds me of somebody. What about you? <laughs> She's my Elizabethan lady. It didn't take too long to make her at all. If you ever need to use any glue, just use white tacky glue. You can see the pins are holding her collar in place right now. But those will be removed. Anyway, I just couldn't help myself. I just thought she looked an awful lot like Queen Elizabeth. Well, that was fun. <laughs> but I think it's time for that soup.
Well, that was fun. I haven't made a corn husk doll in a long, long time. But in keeping with our corn patch theme, our corn patch, our vegetable patch theme, we're going to we are having cornbread cooked in cast iron corn molds, served in beautiful little cabbage leaf dish, and small pumpkin dishes, which are actually real pumpkins. You could also use gourds. That would work just as well. They've just been hollowed out and cleaned out and then filled with this wonderful, wonderful pumpkin soup. The hollowed out pumpkin keeps that soup warm for quite a while. It's a very, pretty good insulator, I must say. And it makes a beautiful presentation on the table. I'll see if I can describe the flavor of this soup. You get a little bit of tartness from the apples. You've got the pumpkin flavor, but it's not like a pumpkin pie because it's not that sweet. We didn't put a whole lot of sweetener in here. You can have a slight, a very slight taste of the spices. And because I added a sweet potato, I think that really, really helped with the consistency of the soup. So it's really kind of a mellow, smooth and creamy soup. I definitely will make this again. This was from a recipe that I found in a magazine full of soups from about 10 years ago that I had held on to. And I'd love to make a soup every time I do a video. I'm just sticking right now with the vegetables um, from the garden soup, the squashes and the pumpkins, because that's what we have available right now. So it just makes a beautiful presentation in your pumpkin or gourd bowl. And after I'm done with this, I will go and give it to the donkeys and cut it up in chunks, and they will absolutely love it for a treat. Again, I'm going to promote Harney & Sons Hot Cinnamon Spice Tea, black tea with orange and sweet clove. I think I've recommended this several times. I guess it's because it's my favorite autumn and winter tea. It's the spiciest, yummiest tea that I can even think of. In a handmade mug from an art show. I just love the beautiful colors in this cup. The same thing with the teapot. And once again, as we've done so many times before this year, Bordalo Pinheiro dishware from Portugal. Or is it Portugal? I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, I hope you'll give those corn husk dolls a try. It's a fun thing to do with your children or your grandchildren. It's really pretty easy, but you can get as elaborate as you like. As I showed you, you can really get artistic with a simple corn husk. So, from Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry, and we'll see you next time. Bye.